Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the interview series. Today I want to focus on the Oxbridge interview. So first things first, the structure. So you're going to have at least two interviews. Uh, it depends on the subject how these are split up. They're at least 30 minutes in length. The important thing is how they're scored. So you're going to get a score of between 1 and 10 for each of your interviews. This is often average, but the tutors at every college will be able to see all of these scores individually as well. So for those, some of those students are getting 10s, they're getting 9s, 10 obviously being the best. So to be in with a solid shot, you want to at least be sort of on 8 plus. That would put you in really, really good standing because of course you're above the average. Now, how do you get as close to that 10 as possible? Now, I think the first misconception I really want to clear up is, because I've heard it going around a lot, is that a lot of people say that there isn't really a right answer to these questions, that there's no wrong answer, you can just talk through and, you know, any of this kind of thought process, this thinking, this potential is what the tutors are looking for. And I completely, completely disagree with this. All the questions that they've kind of prepared and that they're giving to everybody, they're sort of standardised to put everybody on the same footing, and there is a correct answer to these questions. I think maybe where this kind of myth is coming from is more that the way that these interviews work is that there'll be a number of questions that have been prepared and then it's a matter of for each student how many they get through before becoming stuck. So until you reach a question that you genuinely don't have the kind of basic knowledge for or something that is you know, not something you've seen before and you're not able to answer immediately. So for each student that's going to come differently. Let's say uh, you're getting stuck on maybe like the first or the second question, that's probably not going to be too great. If you're getting through six or seven before you become stuck and then, then that's pretty good so far. From then on, it's about how each student deals with being stuck. So. If you get through six or seven and then you come across an unknown question and with the tutor's help you can sort of puzzle your way through to the end i would say that's a very very solid performance and you've probably done very well so coming out of this interview you should know or have a good idea of how you've performed so i feel like this is quite good news for everybody actually because it means that you can in fact practice and become better at these interviews so it's not just about raw genius it's really you can prepare for this so I'm going to go through some of the things that you should be doing. Today I want to more focus on what kind of questions you should expect. I did kind of cover a few things in my last video if you haven't checked it out, but the first couple of questions that you're going to be introduced to are going to be generally icebreaker questions. They'll be sort of just to set the mood. So maybe something from your personal statement or maybe a question like why biochemistry, why management? your reasoning behind these things. These aren't trick questions, they just sort to settle you and get a basic idea of your personality. The next part might be more focused on sort of A-level knowledge and then kind of extending from there, asking you to explore a certain piece of text uh, or ask you to have a look at, uh, I don't know, a fossil and then kind of analyse what you can understand from that or maybe a current affair, they'll give you some sort of a news article and you'll have to kind of uh, understand some points from there and lead a discussion. And then the last part might be more kind of extensive questions, perhaps based on more university first year material and seeing how you can respond to that and how you follow along with that. So I want to run you through an example. Now I've tried to make these questions kind of as general as possible so that they could, and I have seen these appear in both STEM and kind of social sciences, uh, interviews, they could also come, I mean they're not the same type of questions as you might see in humanities, but it's the same sort of logic and thinking, so this could be a great practice for you. So I'm going to go through the questions one by one in the order that I would expect them to appear. Maybe you could pause the video after each question and maybe record yourself giving the answer and you could play it back to yourself to see how that sounds and I will be giving you the model answers in the next video. So question one, what does it mean if there is a correlation between two variables? Question two, have a look at this study here. What does this study show you? Can you interpret the results? Question three, can you suggest an explanation for these results? Question four, now the author of this study suggested that the relationship here could be explained by the fact that there is a link between ingredients found in chocolate and a positive effect on cognitive function. What's your, what do you think about that? Final question, what could you change about the study or what could you add if you were to repeat the study in order to make it a bit more useful? And that's it, those are the questions. You can practice, as I said, giving your answer out loud and then I will come back in the next video and give you some model answers and you can compare it. I hope this video was useful for you. From now on, I'll be posting quite a lot more regularly, so please feel free to comment with anything that you